Hey y'all, this is John Shadle. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to the Force Within You podcast. This is a show where I'm trying to find some goodness and positivity in my friends and squad mates and bring it to you, the listeners. Today I have with me Danny Patterson. Danny joined the Rebel Legion's Kessel Base in August 2007, the Jedi Assembly's Southern Order in September 2008, and the 501st Legion's Star Garrison and South Texas Squad in March 2009. He's in the Knights of the Jedi Order, Star Temple, in the Imperial Officer Corps and Imperial Gunnery Corps. He was the commanding officer of Kessel Base from September 2009 to September 2012. Welcome and thanks for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. Okay, so you and I met for the first time at the Star Wars Reads in Tomball in 2019. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, that was a, that was a, that was an interesting troop. That was a small troop. Um, I, I, I think not a, not a whole lot of people knew about that, but that was, uh, that was kind of fun because we got to go out and play in traffic a little bit. Um, yeah, but that was, that was cool. Okay. So other than the, the stuff in the intro, tell us about yourself. Um, I grew up in, in, um, Basically grew up in Texas, but was born in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, basically, you know, from, I don't know, the age of uh, seven or eight, been playing music uh, my whole life. Play, I'm what? 45 now. And, and playing what? Playing music. Uh, I mean, they're mostly drums, but uh, probably by the time I got to high school, started getting into other instruments, space guitar, guitar. Uh, mandolin dobro just various instruments oh cool and um and basically just just did that and then kind of got you know the whole time when i was growing up got into you know star wars um you know i wanted to see it when i was little you know when it first came out but i was like three or four when when the first first one came out so you know my parents are not going to take me to that (laughs) but my earliest remembrance of star wars is actually uh, we actually went to drive-in theater and it was playing behind us and i kept turning around watching you know the screen behind us they kept no watch this <laughs> you know so um basically you know during all of this you know with everything um just been playing music and trying to do a few troops when i can I, I like see. uh when i like the day i met you i actually did that trip and then went to go pl- leave early to go do a, a show that afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember you telling me about that. So <laughs> uh, tell me, tell me about your music career. Um, uh, <clears throat> kind of play with a little bit of everybody. Uh, I don't really play with like, like on average, I play with six bands. Oh, okay. Um, so one of them, it, most of them are cover bands. Um, uh, there's a few that are original people like uh, one of the original bands is mystery loves company. They uh, are what you would call a chamber rock band. So it's like uh, all the instruments are, there's like acoustic guitar, drums, a cello and a clarinet. Nice. With vocals. So, <laughs> so that's, that's, that's the band. And then I play with a band called vertigo which is a uh, 80s 90s rock pop cover band. Awesome. Then then I play with Johnny and the Spensations which is an oldies band so that's 50s 60s and some 70s. And then play at church and then do a lot of session work and the session work could be with anybody really um, recording sessions and stuff. Do you have do you have any interesting stories from any of your years in the in in the music industry that you can tell on this show? Well, this one this was one when I was probably I don't know I have to think probably fifteen or sixteen years old. Okay, I uh, went on tour with my dad. Um, with he was playing with this other band, and I was just tagging along, so I wasn't really playing at the shows. I was just kind of there, just hanging out with him. Well, they 
we're on a bus, you know, one of the, it was a 1957 Silver Eagle bus, you know, so it's basically what you see, you know, the big country and rock people riding. But this thing was from 57. So it's old. And this was, I don't know, in probably mid 90s. And uh, me being the little person, they put me on the top bunk. So I'm way like there's, yeah, like three bunks in this bus. So I'm on the very top bunk. And where when you lay down, I'm right by the air conditioner. So I have this thing coming right here, right by your face. So when you lay down, it's like right here. And uh, one night I went to bed, they're still driving. The guy made a quick turn and I go, <laughs> fell right off the bunk. And then uh, <laughs> this the same place, you know, you have a bathroom on the, on the bus. Well, I went to go use the facilities. And when you flush, it just, there's the street. So there's no tank. <laughs> so I was like, oh man, at least it wasn't something else besides, <laughs> you know. But yeah, it was, it was bad, bad experience, you know. And then uh, that's why I'm not naming any band names or anything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, how, how was it, how was it for you uh, touring around with your dad? Oh, it was, it was fun, you know, cause I mean, my dad taught me a lot of, uh, like guitar and stuff when, and we played together for close to 30 years. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, before, before he passed away, but, uh, so I mean, so we played in a band together, but this was kind of before we started doing that. So, um, but yeah, it is, there's a lot of it is just trying to just, you know, a lot of it's just spending time with them really. Yeah, you know, spending time with my dad, and uh, you know we had the same type, you know, taste of music, so that that worked also. <laughs> you know, uh, doing that. And how how was y'all's relationship? Oh, it was it was good. I mean, you know, we didn't really, you know, I mean, every family kind of you know argues from time to time, but you know, that is what it is. But you know, other than that, no, it was a good relationship. Um, you know, I think we argued more about music than we did personally you know <laughs> yeah the, the important stuff yeah you know like you know he he would say things like you're rushing or you know that kind of thing, you know that type of stuff but i'm the drummer the tempo is what i say it is <laughs> yeah <laughs> no yeah. but you know i mean he's he was from the old school kind of thing you know so you know it's like i'm the singer i'm you know you follow me so. all right yeah i got news for you pops <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So what, what kind of music did y'all play together? Uh, it was, it was, uh, um, Christian you okay. know, gospel type stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And were y'all, were you, did y'all tour around when you were playing together or was that all around the same place? Uh, well, it was mostly here in Texas. I mean, we did play, you know, kind of all over Southeast Texas. Uh, but we did play some in Arkansas and Tennessee and uh, yeah, it was mostly those two. Uh, so Texas, Arkansas, and Tennessee, that's mostly where we played. Okay. That's cool. And you said that, that y'all played for over 30 years together? Yeah, it's about 30 years. Yeah. Wow. That, you know, I, okay, so I have two kids and, and I bought a, a small electronic drum set for, for them. My son, he's, he's, Oh no, he's not nine. He's 10 now, uh, just turned 10 and he still likes to play the acoustic set. Uh, but mm -hmm. Abby, my 12 year old daughter, nearly 12, uh, she likes playing the, the electric set cause it's, you know, more to her size. Davey's like, I don't care. I want, I want what dad plays, I guess. Um, but man, we'll, we'll put on, we'll put on a song and I'll be playing, uh, on my set and they're one of them is playing on the other set and and i'm just on the inside i'm just beaming going i can't believe that they're doing this at, at 10 and 12 they're keeping up i mean you know fills are kind of kind of rough but you know i don't yeah. care it, it's it's just fun and i'm like hey keep up stay on you know so i i get what your dad was saying but stay with me keep up hold hold the hold the beat and it's, you know, for me, it's, it's just a blast. I'm, I can't imagine what it is to, to actually go 
play in a band with them, but man, I ha- having the experience, the small, silly experience that I've had, it to me is just unbelievably special to have my kid playing with me. And, and mm-hmm. we're just, we're playing in the music room and nobody's listening, nobody's watching it, you know, so I, I can't, I can't imagine how your dad felt uh, or, or even how you felt really playing with your dad, but I can't imagine how your dad felt playing with you and getting that experience for, you know, 30 plus years. That's, that had to have been something super special for him. Yeah, it was. Cause I mean, you know, in the last, you know, three or four years, you know, we, we would only play like one or two kind of things a year, you know, the last, yeah, probably the last five years, we only do, you know, one or two things because he, uh, <clears throat> his voice was, you know, not, not as good as it used to be. So he didn't do a lot of shows anymore. And uh, so we would just do, you know, kind of a one-off here and there type thing. But uh, no, he would tell me, you know, that, that, you know, that he always liked us playing together and, and um, just, you know, it, it's really hard to explain, <laughs> you know, I guess kind of like what you were saying. You know, but uh, no, he would tell me all the time that, you know, that, you know, he was he was my number one fan or something like mm-hmm. that, you know, and uh, that's awesome. It, you know, and really the last uh, month or so, I've been working on some old recordings of his, like trying to rework them. Oh, wow. You know, so basically took his voice and his electric and his uh lead guitar and kind of putting it into the studio and reworking a whole arrangement and stuff. So it's so, oh, uh, cool. something that I kind of, I want to do, you know, I don't know if it will ever get released, but it's just something to kind of maybe do one more thing together oh, you know, man. type thing. Yeah. So, wow. That's cool. I, I love stories like this. I mean, it's cool to see that sort of bond, um, I, or hear about, I should say, it's cool to hear about that sort of bond between a, a dad and a son or, you know, any, any family members, but parents and children. Uh, it's, you know, it, it, it feels like it, it doesn't happen that often these days. Um, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just disconnected, but it's really, is really cool to hear about that sort of thing. It kind of gives me hope as a dad. Uh, and, and I hope that, that, my parents feel that sort of thing with me as well. Um, but you know, it's, you know, I mean, family's a, family's a big deal. And you know, I, that what you're doing to, to try to do one more thing with your dad, I'm, you know, I'm getting a little bit choked up to hearing you talk about that. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. All right. So that's a, a little bit about your music. Okay. Uh, while we're talking about music, I see, uh, the discs on the wall behind you. Can you tell me about those? Oh, those are um, some of the albums I've played on. Oh, Not really? all of them, but some of them. <laughs> okay. These two, uh, you probably can't see, but these two are actually with my dad. Oh, wow. Or this first one way over here, that's actually a solo album I did where I played everything on it. Okay. You played everything. Uh, yeah, I played all the instruments, did all the nice. vocals, recorded it. Uh, Is that out anywhere? Uh, it's it's way out of print. <laughs> only only did something like a hundred copies back when I did it. That came out in, I want to say two thousand five. Okay. This is one of the churches I played at. These two are Mystery Loves Company. Okay. So that cello cello uh, chamber rock so these were all done at uh one of the studios that i work at uh this was a um i think it's called like americana type stuff kind of country it's kind of all over the genre style wise okay uh that was a guy named uh papa hoodlum <laughs> this is one uh I'm trying to remember what the guy's name is because it doesn't have anything on the album cover oh. um but it, it was a guy that they wanted me to come in and do the session and the whole staff set up the whole drum kit and everything. So I walk in, everything's already set up. I get in there and the guy's like, I want drums, but I don't want them to sound like drums. Mm. 
<laughs> so he's like, I don't want symbols. I don't want you to use sticks. Think of something. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so a lot of it, I played with my hands. I kind of rubbed stuff. I hit the floor. I was doing whatever I could think of to not have the drums actually as in the. And how'd that come out? It came out okay. It came out a lot better than I was thinking, you know, because I mean, you're, this happens a lot. You get in a session and, you know, you, most of the time I don't have a clue what I'm getting into when I show up. You know, they'll, they'll just say, you know, like sometimes it might be R&B, one time it might be country, it might be rock. I, I don't know most of the time. Yeah. I just show up and but yeah, it was uh, it was funny. We had one song where he said, "Well, I want it to sound like a drum machine." <laughs> so I, I actually played the drums, and then when they told the engineer, I said, "Well, why don't we just digitally replace what I played? You know, trigger everything, so that sound like a drum machine." So nice. Yeah, and these two are Mystery Loves Company. Also, it's two different. It looks like the same album, but it's actually two different albums. It's oh. like a part one and part two. Oh, okay. So, type thing. so of all the music stuff that that, that you do, um, maybe that you've done, but I, I think currently that you do, what what do you have the most fun doing? I don't know. Um, I actually like. I enjoy doing the session work. Okay. Uh, especially you know, like especially when you walk in and it's somebody saying, "Well, I want you to play this, but not like this." You know, it kind of makes you think. You know, and it's not playing, you know, the same boom, pop, boom, you know. Yeah. You know, it kind of makes you think and kind of jump on your toes type thing, you know. So it's uh makes it a little more interesting. You know, I, I like performing live, but sometimes it's it's more work than than you think it is. You know, it's uh especially if you're in a place where you know you're you're have to play quiet or you know, especially like restaurants, you know, you can't like just, you know, go full, full animal, you know, <laughs> you have to kind of, you got to play quiet. Now, the, those kind of gigs are kind of like, yeah, you know, I'd rather just be in the studio. Right. <laughs> type thing, you know? So you can just wail. Yeah. You know, so, um, but you know, it's, it is what it is. You know, when you're trying to make a living, you just go with the flow and <laughs> just be quiet. Yeah. It, so how how has business been lately with with everything or with uh, a lot of things shut down it, it's really to tell you true that i haven't seen that much change really okay um because i guess i got lucky uh because even last year I, I average about 180 to 200 shows a year wow between shows and get you know and recording sessions you know yeah uh Last year I did 147. Wow! So that's pretty close. Not bad. Yeah. You know, and and I've already done about 25 for the year already. So I mean, I'm not really seeing. I've seen some stuff slow down, but but not a lot because basically, like last year, probably between. I want to say like you know that whole thing kind of started around March or whatever, and I, I only basically took April off. Started right back in May. Okay. And basically from May to probably about September or October, so around there. I was mostly playing restaurants with uh, um, a young singer named uh, Emily Cole. Okay. So we were just doing like duo gigs. And, you know, she does, you know, originals and then she does, you know, like a, kind of your top 40 type of stuff, you know. So and what do Post you Malone and stuff like that. What do you play with her? Are you are you drums or are you guitar or what? Playing drums, but actually I was using uh, like a little electronic drum pad. Oh, okay. Using using it as a drum kit, and uh, yeah. the reason I did that because when I was talking, you know, to her mom, because her mom's kind of like the man, you know, her manager and stuff. Um, I was saying, well, you know, since most of Emily's music is very electronic sounding, you know, it's like the stuff she releases. It's you know, it's very you know modern you know drum machines and you know all that kind of you know synth stuff type stuff so so well i'll just use electronic drums what she plays live you know because what she plays live she plays acoustic guitar and ukulele 
oh. which isn't kind of what's on her albums, you know. <laughs> so, huh. uh, but what I'm playing is kind of more what's on her albums, and then sometimes I kind of ad, ad lib a little stuff because it might not be something I know, you know. But uh, I you you saying that about the the drum pad reminds me of a a story that just now it's funny to me. In the moment, it was not so funny to me, but I went to uh, the Cayman Islands with uh, with uh, my former church again, um, and I okay. So I played drums forever in the in the church band. Uh, went to the Cayman Islands with the with the band, and uh, we were playing down there. And they said, "Yeah, we have a drum set," and it was a drum pad. And I'd never played a drum pad before. And, you know, I'd only been playing drums for, you know, I don't know, five or six or seven years. And so, you know, I needed things to be the right way. And uh, I was I was a little upset when when I got there and saw this, you know, an octopad and and yeah. one one pedal on the floor. And I'm like, this is what I'm playing and it, so you know it was a little it was a little i was a little distraught and so we're playing and and it's you know it's got a it's got a good sound um and the the sort of band leader um we're singing i, I mean he's singing and playing and and he turns around and looks at me and the whole thing just comes to a screeching halt we were rehearsing so it was no problem but he's almost fallen over laughing and i i'm like what and he's like this huge good sound coming from you and i turn around and i see this giant guy playing this little tiny square tiny. <laughs> and yeah and he's like i did, it just caught him off guard and he's laughing and laughing and i was even more upset when that happened and i mean now it's it's funny but i mean i can i can find the humor there but man in the moment it was just it was so uh, it was, it was kind of traumatic a little bit but that's oh yeah oh i i know because it's i get a lot of looks when i always show up to geeks with this little setup you know and they're like what what is this you know and i'm like don't worry about it it's gonna sound good you know because it does sound good you know it really it looks does. a little goofy you playing it but right. you know yeah but, i mean it's you know it's like do you want it to sound good or do you want to look good right <laughs> and and my answer is yes both but you know as as an accessory i mean those things are fantastic i just you know, me playing it, it was not my preference. And, and now I'd probably, I'd probably dig it now, but you know, back then it's just like, Oh no, get me out of this torture. I was coming down here for vacation and a good time. And now it's just terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible. But anyway, that's, and, and it turned out that that was one of my favorite memories from, uh, from going anywhere to do anything. I played there, played in Venezuela and, and I mean, you know, had a, had a blast doing it in, that I'm I'm with you, man. I'd I'll take what I can get and playing live is is super fun, but I also like the uh you know the the sort of not in front of people work uh as well. It's it's a super fun thing. Yeah. I that I I can I can relate to all the stuff you're saying. I mean, not on as big a scale as you and, and not for as long as you, but yeah, that's you know, music is a is it's a it's a fun and it's a it's a bit of a weird thing sometimes oh yeah yeah <laughs> there things can get weird <laughs> yes certainly can <laughs> anyway all right so uh, what else about you i mean that's really about it uh besides just you know like collecting what my wife would say junk <laughs> you know? like what kind of stuff uh, like you know comic books and coins and just random stuff you know it's like i'll, I'll start something I'll just just keep getting stuff you know you know and it's it's even with music instruments you know i mean it's, you know i don't need as much stuff as i have but it's yeah it just accumulates you know <laughs> right and that's that's the most expensive one yeah <laughs> but you know i always you know anytime i get ready to buy some i always say well i'm going to sell this to get it. and she's like but how much would you get it if you sold it? And I was like, well, it wouldn't be very much. She said, well, you better just keep it. You know, it's worth just keeping, you know. You're like, oh, darn. So, I was like, darn, yeah. But, uh, so, uh, okay, so of the of the things that you collect, do you have a, 
Do you have a favorite collection or a favorite thing in your collection? Um, well, like, like, especially when we just had this, the storm, you know, the, uh, the freeze here <laughs> just went, went on, Yeah. you know, I lost power, uh, here for a couple of days, but I was like, man, I haven't gone through my comic books in like years. So I started digging around and, and, uh, got all that stuff out and, and actually yeah pull this out and i actually forgot i actually have this the uh it was the first issue oh wow star wars <laughs> wow yeah the first you know from like i don't know what was it 77 wow. 78 i don't know when do they so yeah i opened it up and sit and read it because <laughs> i was like i don't think i've ever read this thing you know oh that's and, awesome uh, and it started going there, and I actually had part two. I just thought I had that one, but I actually forgot I even had that until I started going through there. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, completely forgot about it. So that is something kind of I forgot about, but I was like, I was kind of glad I have it. You know? Yeah, that's cool. So we're, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to put it back in the box? Or are you going to hang it somewhere? Or, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I've got it in a like display. sleeve thing, but uh, yeah, I don't really know yet. <laughs> we'll probably just put it back in the. They're like in Tupperware boxes, you know, or, Put or, box. or whatever you, call you know, it. you have it. That's good enough. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, I'm not sure if I want to hang it, you know, it's kind of like you kind of want to hang it up, but then you're not sure if you really should. Right. <laughs> type thing, you know? Is that, is that something that you got in the seventies or did you get that after the fact? No, I got it actually probably when I, in the nineties or so. Okay. I want to say I actually got it off of eBay. Okay. I think, but you know, I got it in the nineties. I know that, but I just don't really remember when. Uh, and I want to say I probably spent, probably paid like 30 or 40 bucks for it. Wow. So, yeah. and I haven't looked up that stuff, you know, what is it? What's the value of it now these days? But, you know, yeah, I bet it's more than that. Oh, uh, that's what I was. That's what I was thinking. I, I figure, you know, maybe a hundred bucks. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but, but that's the kind of thing you just you just hang on to. Yeah, you know, and it's that's kind of a lot of my stuff, you know, and that's what I've always joked with my wife. You know, I was like, well, this is my retirement fund. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I'll sell this stuff when I get old, you know. Because, I mean, I've got like, I kept all my stuff when I was little. I mean, I've got, you know, Master of the Universe stuff. I've got oh, wow. G.I. Joe and, you know, some Star Wars stuff. That's the crazy part. When I was growing up, I didn't have a lot of the Star Wars stuff, you know, when I was little. If I did get any of it, I got it from like a garage sale or something, you know. Uh, but it's like when they kind of reissued all of that stuff in, I don't know, what was that, 97, 96, that Power of the Force stuff. Yeah, where, yeah. Know, everybody looks like this. Everybody's know? on steroids, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I bought a lot of that stuff, you know, and uh, kept it for years. And, uh, you know, and I don't know if it was to kind of like relive my childhood or something. I don't know. Uh, I, I did bet that. it's and something then, like that. Yeah. You know, I don't know. It was just kind of, a, it was like, man, I'm going, cause I never had that. I never had that. I'm going, you know, so I bought all this stuff. And then my nephew had this, uh, I don't know when, what birthday was that? Probably like his seventh, eighth birthday or something. He was going to have a star Wars party, star Wars birthday party. And, uh, so it was like me and actually this is so this was probably about 2009 2000 or so or whatever it's kind of right after i kind of got into the legion and all that so we had like um some of the guys come over and we're all dressed up and all this and and actually i brought a lot of my action figures that i was like man i don't have really space for this stuff so i lay them all out on the table and just told the kids just Get whatever you want. <laughs> so oh, I wow. gave away a lot of that stuff. You know, just because nice. it was like I kept the ones that I really wanted to keep, but you know, everything else was like, y'all can have it. Just get it. <laughs> that's cool. At a Star Wars birthday party, no less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's what I was like, well, I could bring this stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. So, all right. When maybe and how did you become a Star Wars fan? What about it did you like? Um, I know I liked, you know, cause like I said, when I was, you know, in 77, I was like two, 
So I didn't really catch on to it till probably, I guess I want to say probably Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi. <clears throat> okay. Because um, I want to say, I know I had a, a Empire Strikes Back and a Return of the Jedi lunchbox, you know, the big metal ones back in the day. Yeah. I had those. And um, and I just want to say I got into it because, like I said, at that point, I really hadn't seen the movies. Uh, I didn't really see any of the movies till VHS kind of came along. So I don't really know when that really was. But um, I think I got into it because I've just liked like the the just the images, you know, the images and the just the way it looked and everything. You know, it's very otherworldy, you know, type type thing, you know, just like the ships and, you know, and I like, for some reason, I always liked the way Darth Vader looked. Yeah. Just, just the look is just, it's just cool looking, you know, stormtroopers and, you know, the lightsabers, just, just the whole thing. I was just like, man, it's just cool. <laughs> so, I mean, that's kind of how I got into it, but I don't really remember technically when, you know. Sure. Yeah. But in but, your, in your young childhood. Um, okay. Yeah. While we're talking about the movies, uh, which trilogy is your favorite? The the, the original, okay. <laughs> you know. So, in which movie? Yeah, of a the New original? Hope, all of that. Yeah, which movie of the original is your favorite? I would say Empire. Empire Strikes Back. Okay, and and do you have a different favorite of any of the other movies? Um, I kind of actually, I, I'm, I'm not one that like hated on any of them, you know, when everybody was like, you know, oh, that they should have never done that, you know? Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, in the prequels, I, I did like Revenge of the Sith. I, I, I did like that. And the newer ones, um, I kind of liked the last one, but I, I really didn't mind the second one either. What was that? The uh, Last Jedi. Last Jedi. I actually didn't mind that one. Uh, cause actually when, you know, the part, you know, I don't know if this, if we would need to say spoiler alert or nah, anything at you know? this point, so I'm sure everybody's seen this stuff, at right. this point. but you know, when, when Ray hands, you know, Luke, the lightsaber and he just looks at it, like, I actually laughed at that. Oh, you know, when he, when he just it tossed it over his shoulder. Yeah. Cause I'm like, he's probably fed up with this at this point. So he's like, eh. you know, <laughs> so I, you know, a lot of people were like, you know, oh, he would have never done that. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> If yeah, you're really well, that fed up with it. Yeah, and he was kind of whiny, and and you know, I mean, he gets mad about something, and you know, you maybe you can see him doing something like that. That's not what I yeah, wanted him to do. I wanted him no, to be but... the the Luke of the Mandalorian. Um, you know, that's that's what I wanted, but you know, that's not what we got. So we got that version, and that's what it is. So yeah, now what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but yeah, but I would say out of the, I would say out of the last one's probably Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, okay, uh, was probably the better one. Yeah, and how do you feel about the standalones, Solo and Rogue actually, one? actually, I almost prefer those over the other ones. Rogue One. Yeah, that's actually probably my my favorite out of any of the new ones. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Yeah, and man, the the last scene where Vader just goes nuts on. Uh, yeah. Wow. The, yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, that's well, you know that, and and you know the whole scene where they're fighting on like the beach. Yeah, uh, you know the stormtroopers and all that. I mean, just that whole, just the whole thing. I just thought was really done well. Yep, yep, I loved it. Give me, give me all the Star Wars content you want to give me, and I'm there. I'm happy. It's it's just goodness. So yeah, I'm with you. All right. Um. So kind of changing gears. What, how did you end up learning about any of the legions before you got into them? Well, I got into, um, somehow I learned about the rebel legion through, I think it was one of the celebrations I went to. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I saw that and, you know, and I was like, Hey, I could probably do a Jedi costume, you know, type thing. So I was like, it doesn't look that hard to do, you know? And uh, so I kind of put one together and kind of got bits and pieces together and just kind of worked on it slowly. Uh, probably took like a year or so to really get that up and going. Um, then uh, 
I don't even know if this is even a thing anymore. Uh, there was a website. What was it? I'm trying to remember. Is it the force.net? I'm assuming that's still around. I haven't gone to any of this stuff in years. Uh, but uh, there was like a little local group of, you know, in Houston, we would, they would get on the forum and say, hey, we're all going to hang out at, you know, this place, you know, this night, you know, just come out and just, just hang out, you know. And uh, so I would go there and there was two members of the 501st there. Okay. So, you know, what it was was, you know, they were like, well, we'll be at this table, just look for the Stormtrooper helmets. So I'd show up and, uh, and I'd meet these guys. And it was uh, Ian and uh, David. Uh, they were both with uh, the uh, Star Garrison. And, you know, we were talking about just Star Wars in general. But uh, they were like, well, yeah, well, we do, you know, Star Wars stuff, you know, like dress in our costumes and, you know, do kids events and things like that and all that. And I was like, well, I've got, I got this, this Jedi outfit, you know, but there's really nothing here. There was, you know, there was nothing here really. So he was like, well, just show up to ours, you know? So I would show up in my Jedi outfit to the, these 501st events, you know, because of David and Ian, they were like, yeah, just show up. It'll be cool. You know, don't worry about it. You know, so I did that, you know, and that just one thing led to another, you know, they were like, and I was like, well, how, what would be the easiest way to join, you know, the 501st? And he's like, well, you know, they started, they got me into the forms and all that. And I started, so I, joined as a an officer because i figured it's cloth it'd be probably cheaper and easier yeah you know to to get this together you know so so i did that and then uh probably probably about a year or so after having that on the form somebody was selling that gunner helmet you know and i was like oh that would be cool you know because it's like i always just thought the gunner looked cool, even though he's only on film for like, I don't know, 15, 30 seconds right. or something like he's not on very long. And uh, so I was like, yeah, so I got the helmet and then, you know, try to figure out how to get the flight suit and all that. So, so it's just kind of one thing led to another, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. So you joined the Legion, you start trooping, uh, what what is something or some things that have left an impression on you after you join any of the legions? I know probably the one thing that that I would say touched me the the most. I don't know if that's the right term or not. Uh, we did one of the children's hospitals events. Okay. And um, you know, go visit the kids in the hospital, and um, you know, the nurses, you know, were walking down the hall, and the nurses like, "You got to go into this room here," you know this i forgot what what room it was but you know somewhere on this wing and uh we walk in there and the, the kid is like i'm assuming he's been there for a while because i mean he had his whole room decorated like star wars posters and just hmm. stuff everywhere and uh he was actually building like a lego uh i want to say like the vader's tie fighter like in his bed and all this but we had a Vader there with us and it, you know, and had Vader walk in and, you know, the kid looks up and he's like, <gasps> you know, he's like, like, that's cool. You know, but you know, the parents, you know, came out, you know, while everybody was, you know, cause those rooms are so small. Right. Uh, the, you know, I was like the last one to go in because I was dressed up as a Jedi. So I just thought, you know, I'll let them let the bad guys go in first and I'll kind of go in last, you know, there was a couple of rebel legion people there but um well the parents there they were really i don't know what's touched i guess uh you know because they were saying that uh he just had like one of his chemo treatments or something and that always kind of puts him down so they put on like star wars movie and, they, and he'll kind of work on stuff like that just to kind of i guess get his mind off of you know he doesn't feel well and she was just like y'all don't know what that did to, mm. to him, you know, just y'all walking in there, you know? So, uh, so that's always left an impression just that a lot of people don't realize, I mean, all we are doing is just going and saying hi to, you know, a little kid, but you know, it affects the parents, the, especially in a situation like that, where, you know, 
you know, because the kid's going through cancer or, or something or whatever, but it affects the parents also, you know, it affects yeah, everybody. Totally. Yep. So, uh, you know, when, when we go in there and just, you know, say hi, you know, it, it just, everybody was like, you know, wow, you know, that type of thing. So that's always left an impression yeah. of, uh, that, you know, this is, this is a cool thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, you know, it was it, last week I had, not last week, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I had uh, TJ Presley on the show and he was talking about his experience with his kid in the hospital and his wife having to be there with uh, with him for, you know, a long time. And, you know, he can, he could relate to the fact that you're not, you're not only necessarily touching the lives of the kids who maybe give you the biggest reaction, but you're also touching the lives of, of the parents who are having to go through some of the same difficulties. Um, and you know, maybe, maybe not on the same level, but in some cases, maybe even a little worse, uh, because, you know, watching your child suffer, you know, the child may be able to deal with it a lot better than the parents can. And so, you know, sometimes we're serving the parents, you know, maybe as much as the kids, maybe sometimes even more. And, and that's, you know, that was, that was kind of a, oh, wow. I don't, I don't know that I would have ever thought of that if you hadn't brought that up kind of moment, you know, just knowing that it's, it's, and it's not just, it's not just them. Maybe, maybe it's the nurses or the hospital staff who are dealing with these, not dealing with, but who are, who are in front of these kids every day. And, you know, maybe, maybe that seeing the smiles on the kids' faces or the relief for the parents, maybe, uh, maybe that, maybe that helps hospital staff as well. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I've not had an experience to say that that's true, but, you know, just talking about this, maybe that's, maybe that's also the case or could be anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was always a good one. And, and I always liked doing the, uh, like the baseball night, you know, those Star Wars nights at the baseball yeah. games and stuff. You know, just watching the kids and, and, and like you said, the adults just, you know, like, hey, can I get a picture with y'all? You know, because you see this 40 or 50 year old guy now become a little 12 year old, you know, right. dude, it's stormtroopers, you know, that, that kind of thing. You know, it's, it's just fun. You know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. And, you know, it, there's, there's the whole, I mean, it's the whole range of, reactions some you know it's it's to help bring a smile to somebody's face or to take a few minutes of of misery away from somebody or you know the the parents preoccupation with how they're going to pay the bills for the hospital or something like that all the way over to you know going to to do something that's just fun like like a comic palooza type thing or a, a baseball game or basketball whatever whatever it is, it's the whole range. And, and, you know, for me, it's a little bit dressing up like a plastic spaceman and a little bit going and helping people and a little bit going and hanging out afterwards and having fun with my fellow troopers. And, you know, just, it, it's, it's so, it, it's, it's so much more than I thought it would ever be. And it shocks me still that it is what it is. It's, yeah it's just great. Yeah, it really is. Uh, cause like I said, the, you know, when talking to Ian and David, you know, years ago at those little like Star Wars meetings, you know, just, just hanging out and they were talking about, Oh, well, yeah, well we do this and that, you know, and when they're talking about it, you're like, man, that sounds kind of hokey, you know, <laughs> until, <laughs> until you see it in person and stuff, you're like, man, this is pretty cool. You know? So, yeah. I, you know? Yeah. So and and uh, I kind of, I, I I kind of get that from people where I tell them what we do and, and they're like, really, you're a grown man and you dress up in this. And, uh, and, you know, then I tell them about some of the, some of the fun we have and some of the charity aspect and some of the community that we have within, within the group. And they're like, Hmm, yeah, okay. I, I mean, I get that. And, you know, you say charity and go visit hospitals and people are, you know, their, their cynicism starts to, to melt away and, yeah. you know, it's like, Oh, okay. So you're, you're doing a good thing. Yeah, I really am. And I get to be selfish about it too, because I have a whole, whole lot of fun doing it. So, yeah, you know, well, and it's, 
you know, you have that, and then you have, you know, some guys are like, you know, you know, besides, you know, if you told me, you know, well, let's, you know, we go to children's hospitals and things like that. But then, you know, I, I've told people, well, you know, I got to be on stage with Weird Al. You know, yes. then they're like, oh, man, now that's cool, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, so uh, have you ever done the, the Weird Al thing? Nope. Have you ever... You, oh, you never got to do that? No, and and he he changed it. I think he changed it to where he only wants TK, where he only wants storm stormtroopers. Um, so if I I think that's true, maybe that's not, but that's the impression that I got anyway. So um, I think my my chances of doing that are non-existent now. So oh, yeah, because when I did it was I don't know that was two thousand probably two. Well, actually, I've got the poster up there on the wall. What is that? Like huh. 2010. Oh yeah, and, there were uh, a lot fewer than too. Yeah, so 2010. What what we did is uh, they said they wanted stormtroopers, a Vader, and then they said you can have kind of like two random people on the end. Oh, so I was okay. one of the random people, gotcha. you know, because <laughs> so, I did that in Gunner. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, because I, I think that was the rule. Everybody had to be a helmet, you know. So. Uh, but yeah, I did Gunner. And I wanted to say there was uh, I'm trying to remember who the other person was on the other end. But yeah, well, maybe that's the same rule as as exists now, and I just misunderstood the rule. I mean, yeah, that's it. I said I I just did it the one time because I you know I didn't want to be one of those people that like sign up and do it every year, mm-hmm. you know, because I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to do it once and then let somebody else do it. Sure. So. Uh, but it, it it was fun. So yeah, that's cool. Okay, I feel like it's time to to get to the last question, and that is, what is the force within you? Uh, I would say it's just being positive. Uh, you know, just doing stuff. You know, even if something bad happens, try to find the positive in it. You know, uh, that was like you know this week with the storms. You know, there was a lot of people I know that had you know busted water pipes and all this, and. I had one little leak in my garage and I'm like, if that's all I have, that's, that's yeah. good. You know, I mean, even though it happened, that's, you know, and unfortunately there's other people around me that had way worse stuff, Yeah. but you know, a lot of people would look at it, you know, Oh man, that's just, that's bad. You know, it's like, well, that's good. That's only one compared to, you know, um, you know, that and just taking care of your family and yourself, you know, um, you know, because I mean, I've got a wife and I got a wiener dog. I don't have kids. So my wiener dog's my kid. So, uh, you know, and, and, you know, taking care of, you know, my in-laws, and my mom and, you know, just uh, to me, it's just try to stay positive with everything, you know, just try to find the positive in anything. I mean, there's a lot of bad stuff out there. Just, I don't look at that and just kind of re reword it to, you know, what's, what's the best thing that happened, you know? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, I I like that answer. Of course, I like that answer. That's that's great. Hey, um, before before I forget this, is is there any place where somebody can go to find out about uh, where you're playing or what you're doing or anything that you've got going on? And my website, because I try to keep that pretty up to date. And what is that? So it's dannypattersonmusic.com. Okay. All right. I will be sure to send people your way. Um, man, thank you for coming on and doing this. Thanks for your years of service in, in the legions and the, the years of smiles and the years of charity and all of, all of the goodness that you've brought to the world by being out there doing that the the heart that you have the positivity thank you so much i i love seeing it and and i love saying it when i see it so thank you for for being you i appreciate it man yeah thanks thanks for having me on the show yep and thank you all so much for listening if you'd like to let me know how i'm doing or give me suggestions i'm really interested so please leave me a comment let me know what you think to do that, you can find me at the Force Within You podcast on Instagram and Facebook. And remember, you all have the Force Within You, something exceptional that makes you stand out. 
You just have to have the courage to find it and let it out. Take care.